And welcome back. I am Jill Berlin. You are listening to The Jill Berlin Show on WSJS. And something that we love to do is inform our voters. We like to get as many candidates in here as possible on both the left side and the right side and straight down the middle so that you as the voter can be informed. And someone that is hitting the mailboxes hard, I have heard so many people say that they have gotten his mailers, is Lieutenant Colonel Christian Castelli. He was re retired from the United States Army Special Forces, and he is here today to tell us why he is running for office. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Jill, for having me. I appreciate it. I appreciate it too. So tell us a little bit about what makes you different from your competitors. Well, first, I had the great honor and privilege of serving our country for over 22 years in uniform. Uh, first six years as an Airborne Ranger Infantry Officer, last 15 as a Green Beret. Uh, during my service, uh, I had the, the privilege of leading America's sons and daughters on many battlefields during 14 deployments to hostile fire zones around the globe. I deployed to about 20 different countries. I worked at the forefront of public policy in places that we read about and see on the news every day. Um, the, the Army. That probably really prepares you well, right? I mean, if you're forced to be in these different situations, high intensity, and then you're also out there in so many places, you're pro you have to learn to adjust. Right. You have to learn to focus, to refocus. And I know that sounds pretty simple, but if you think about it, it's actually harder to do, right? And you you lived that and experienced it so many times. And now tell me how that then transfers over into you your civilian life to then ultimately running for office. Sure. So I think, you know, what distinguishes my candidacy the most, and when you look at the candidates in the field, uh, I bring a very unique global perspective federal perspective, state and local perspective to my candidacy that none of the other candidates bring. And so when you have uh, deployed to and lived in 20 different countries around the globe, uh, when you have um, brought American values and our way of life and our thinking and actually used our constitution in countries where they didn't have one, uh, and that became the model for success and um, you know, America is the beacon of uh, democracy for the world. Everybody wants to be us. They, they literally do. Uh, we have an inherent responsibility as the leader of the free world, as Americans. And um, I really believe in American exceptionalism, uh, that we are a, a unique, the greatest country in the history of the world. And we have some inherent responsibilities with that. I love that term, American exceptionalism, because you're right you go to these countries and you see how far behind they are. And then you come here and you think how well run our country is and how well the forefathers were able to establish laws and govern our people. So tell us a little bit about what do you feel like, but of course nothing's important, right? So, yeah. I mean, nothing's perfect is what I meant to say. Nothing's perfect. So what do you consider to be the most important issue facing America? Yeah, so we have, you know, if you look at the global problems that we face today, both internationally, nationally, uh, the number one issue that we face here in the country is our open border, our southern border issues. And so um, my husband would agree with that. Yeah. The other, <laughs> the other things that I think are unique about my candidacy is I bring a tremendous amount of foreign policy experience, a tremendous amount of national security experience. And if you look at my background compared to all of my fellow candidates that are running, uh, I have more foreign policy and national security experience than all of them combined. Oh, wow. And given the global problems and, and problems that we face nationally, uh, my skill set and my background are more perfectly suited to handle these challenges today than anybody else in the candidate field. So what do we do to secure the border? Yeah, so, you know, I have had the privilege of working on many contested international borders. No other candidate can say that. Uh, I've worked on a number of them, whether it was uh, Bosnia, Serbia, Afghanistan, Pakistan. And the reason they were contested international borders is because they weren't clearly defined with a wall or a fence. So the first thing we need to do is complete the wall 
and clearly define our southern border. The next thing we need to do is, is do a comprehensive immigration policy reform. Look at the entire uh, operation, our policies that are in place, what worked, what didn't work, best practices, and do a complete comprehensive review. And that harkens back to my days as an inspector general, where we went into government agencies and we did policy, law, regulatory reviews, and we came out with best practices to move forward with. But there's some more practical things like reinstating Title 42, uh, the Remain in Mexico stuff. Uh, we have got to uh, cut the floodgates, shut the floodgates and uh, you know stop the flow of the illegals. Uh, there's been hundreds of uh, people on the terror watch list that have entered our southern border. Um, I have spent time on patrol with border sheriffs on our southern border. I'm the only candidate that can say that. I've actually patrolled our southern border in uniform with armed law enforcement what's, and seen what's firsthand. That, what, what is that like? Can you give us a firsthand account? Sure. A story that maybe impacted you? Sure. So uh, last October, I went down to Cochise County, Arizona. It is in the Tucson sector. And I patrolled with four days with Sheriff Mark Daniels. And if you watch Fox News a lot, you see Mark Daniels always reporting from the front seat of his patrol car. He is uh, proverbially a cop's cop. Uh, you know, there's sheriffs that wear suits and stay in the office all day and they more akin to a politician. And then there's sheriffs that wear uniforms, get in the car and they're on patrol on the front lines with their deputies. Right, right. He's one of those. Yeah, yeah. And so he... Uh, uh, pick, it sounds like you may be too. Uh, yeah, I, I, I tell you, I was in my element again. I felt like I was back in special forces. And uh, he picked me up and I, I was dressed in a you know business casual. I thought we were going to dinner. And he got out of the a car and he was in his full tactical gear with a vest. And he said, I thought we were going to dinner. Uh, I see, he says, we are McDonald's drive through I want you to see what I see on the southern border every day. We grabbed a burger at the drive through and we went out on patrol. And within five minutes, we were in a high speed chase, chasing a vehicle down the interstate, loaded down with migrants. And, uh, you know, this is they encounter this all day long. And so he said to me, he goes, you know, Democrats would lead you to believe that illegal immigration is a victimless crime. And he said, I got news for you. The list of victims is every American citizen and the list of crimes, which I'm going to expose you to, is as long as your left arm. What a mouthful. And he took me to see ranchers. He took me to interview uh, Border Patrol, state, uh, federal, state and local law enforcement to hear each one of their perspectives. And it was eye opening. And to get those firsthand accounts is so impactful. Right. Because like you said, you have the people in the office who are just sitting there, you know, with all the papers and the computers in front of them. And then you have people who go out and see it firsthand. And then that's when you get the real stories. Right. That's when you understand exactly. how bad it really is. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, some people live in our little North Carolina bubble and we think we're safe here, but we're affected. If you if you get hit on the road uh, by someone who's done drugs, most likely those have come from um, the cartel from down south because they came across the border and it's a huge problem it is a huge problem so tell us a little bit more about you spoke about title 42 what tell us about that yeah so you know when i was down there the, the sheriff took me in and we uh, interviewed a local rancher this is a, a great story it's a little bit of a vignette i want to tell you uh, i met this gentleman who owned a sixteen thousand acre acre cattle ranch on the border and his name is John Ladd, and he's interviewed a lot in the media. And uh, he, he took me out and he said, look, he said, uh, I live here. I have to coexist right here on the border with the cartels, and they're bringing people across in droves. And uh, they slaughter my cattle. Mm. If they want to send me a message, they leave a note on the carcass. Oh, my god! To gosh. send me a message. To How steer, barbaric. To steer clear of the area that they're going to be operating in with migrants and trafficking folks. He said the property damage is about eight to 10,000 a month on my ranch. They tap into my surface laid irrigation for water, my surface laid PVC pipe. They fill up their canteens, they take a drink and they just let it run. And if I don't happen along it, I lose that precious resource. Oh he my said gosh. it's just one horror story after the next. That's terrible. All right. Uh, we are here with Christian Castelli, who is running for Congress in the 6th District. Stay tuned. We're going to keep asking him some more hard questions when we come back. I'm Jill Berlin. Good, good
You're listening to The Jill Berlin Show on WSJS. Welcome back. I am Jill Berlin. You are listening to The Jill Berlin Show on WSJS. And we love to inform our voters. And we are here with former or retired Lieutenant Colonel Christian Castelli, who is with the United States Army Special Forces. And he has seen firsthand how important it is to protect our border. And we were talking about how he not only hears about these stories, but he has ridden with the sheriff's department in high speed chases and he's lived it. He's lived it. Tell us how you were talking about when you did this um, down in Arizona, when we went to break, tell us how this then ties back to our community, our corner of the world here in North Carolina. Sure. Sure. So sheriffs are uh, famous for saying that every community in America is now a border community. They experience. Uh, Say that, that again. Every community in America is a border community. Now. What does that mean? And so what they're referring to is, you know, all of the the issues when the border crisis first started that they were experiencing specifically in Arizona and in Texas, we're now all feeling those effects now here in central North Carolina and the Piedmont Triad area. And you were talking about how this Arizona um, farmer is, you know, gets threats from the drug cartel. And the first thing I thought was, well, why isn't this guy moving? And then the second thought I had was, well, why should he move when they are coming in? But, you know, you don't necessarily hear that specific story here in our, in our area, but we are impacted. So keep right. going on that. Right. So uh, one of the ways that uh, North Carolina Congressional District 6 is impacted is, uh, and I'm not sure a lot of people know this, but we are now uh, North Carolina is one of the highest um, rated states for human trafficking. We're rated number nine in the country. And, and that part of that is because of the, the confluence of the interstates here. We've got I-95 running north-south. We've got 40 east-west. We have 85 going diagonal. Uh, this is sort of a, you know, they refer to this area as the gateway uh, to the west with I-40, the I-40 corridor. And so what that's done is become a human trafficking superhighway. And so much so that the uh, several of the local sheriffs, including Bobby Kimbrough right here in Forsyth, uh, as well as Alamance, Terry Johnson, and a bunch of them have, are standing up a uh, anti-human trafficking task force. Which is interesting because it almost goes back to the olden days when, you know, you would bring in goods from other countries and you would, you would go into whatever port was easiest, right? They would bring the boats. And so we are, you would think having this highway, intricate highway system here in North Carolina would be a good thing. Right. But in fact, it is actually putting us here in danger. Right. Yeah. So, you know, uh, as, as beneficial as the highway system is, the bad guys, oh, you need a highway system also. Right. And that's what they're doing. They're trafficking fentanyl into the area. They're trafficking humans uh, and, and any issue that is causing the death of 300 Americans a day, like the fentanyl crisis is, has got to be the number one priority for our country. Uh, you know, the economy is painful. We have other issues. We have high crime. Uh, the economy, um, you know, we'd like to restore energy independence. All of those things are great and important also. But any issue that costs 300 American lives a day has got to be our number one priority and focus. And that is uh, our border. And so what is it that we that you're going to do to help protect the sixth district and just for some of the folks who are out there listening, cause there has been one of the things that I talked about um, with a, a lady who had gotten your mailer this morning before the show, I said to her, is there any, is there anything that you can think of that you would want to know? And she said, um, I want to know what it is that he's going to do differently. Mm -hmm. how, how does he protect us versus everyone else? Right. Because I want to be protected. What, what does he do? Well, I think you have to use the, the power of congressional subpoena authority. You have to use the power of the purse, which Congress holds. And, um, and when we have to, uh, you know, I, I alluded to earlier, I have a background as an inspector general. And so one of the missions of the inspector general is to do comprehensive audits and inspections of systems to make our government run more efficiently. I mean, the ultimate goal is government efficiency, efficiency and, and use of the taxpayer dollars uh, for whatever mission that government agency has. And so 
doing a comprehensive review of our border and immigration policies is essential at this point, given the, the disaster that we face on our southern border. And quite frankly, this is so bad, uh, it is creating a national security crisis of epic proportions. We've got untold gotaways coming across the border. We have caught hundreds of uh, people on the terror watch list. It's only a matter of time till we have a 9-11 and we're allowing this to happen right here under our noses with the current administration. And I was just going to say, for you, what's that like? Because there are some people out there who like to complain. And there are some people out there who, after they see a bad situation, and there are some people out there who just can't sit still and have to go out and do something about it, right? You seem like an action-oriented guy. Yeah, so that, that's me, right? So uh, I'm, a, I'm an action guy. I can't sit back on the couch and yell at Fox News all day. Uh, <laughs> and so the catalyst for me to jump in this race was the My night. My great-grandmother can. The, the day of watching uh, the botched withdrawal from Afghanistan, I watched in horror after I had done five tours in Afghanistan, uh, spent three years in combat there as a Green Beret. I watched as we released 20,000 prisoners that we had captured over a 20 year period, turned over billions of dollars worth of equipment, abandoned our partners and allies, and worst of all, lost 13 soldiers needlessly during the bots didn't withdrawal at Abbey Gate. And I looked at my wife and I said, honey, I just can't take it anymore. I feel like a first round draft pick in the NFL who's on injured reserve, sitting the bench, watching my team get clobbered. Yeah, out. that's such a great it analogy. It is time, you know, now that we're in playoff season, yeah. it is time <laughs> to get back in the fight, get back in the game. If I could do it in uniform, I would. I'm on the retired rolls. I'm going to do it in Congress on the battlefield in Washington. Uh, okay, so there's the answer, right? So uh, you would love to go do it, right, and and get back out there on the battlefield. Because I, I could tell that about you is that you, and the only reason why that resonates with me is because I'm the same way. I cannot sit still and just watch things happen. Go out there and do something about it. And you seem like you're the exact same way. And since you can't go out there and do it with boots on the ground, you're going to go to D.C., which you already have experience in, it seems like. so. Right. Yeah, so I was a senior advisor, senior military advisor to the Secretary of Defense's office at the Pentagon. Yeah, uh, I got to cut you off there. All right, you all, you have been listening to The Jill Berlin Show, and you can find out more information about Christian Castelli at, what's the website? Castelli4nc.com. Castelli4nc.com. For Christian Snyder, I am Jill Berlin. Thanks for listening today. Are you cooped up? Feel like a zombie?